Now at this point we've got our site that we were able to resurrect. I'm going to take a quick look at it again under visit site because a whole week, you know, a week is a long time. I don't remember what I did, what we did. So I'm going to go back to visit site briefly to see what we've got. We've got a home screen with a static home page. We've got a menu on the left, home, our blog, recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, meta. And if you look at our blog, a little bit of text there, and the two blog posts. Alright, so what we were doing last time we were still going through sheet three. On sheet three, we had uh, under practice we added a post. Uh, we haven't edited the about page, but we added a page. We uploaded a we uploaded a picture, didn't we? Remind me, or was that the other class? We uploaded a picture. Um, we talked about changing the theme. We'll do that. Search for and install a new plugin. Switch between front and back end. Okay. So, if this site is going to be our site for this project, it's uh, incomplete in that. Okay, we've got a home screen. We have the blog. I want to add an about page. And then as the, as the course goes on, I want to add the shopping cart and so forth. So I want to add a new page to the site. I want to add the about page. Let's switch back to the dashboard. So hover over the name of your site and dashboard. And click on uh, or hover over pages and then click all pages. We're going to go look at all pages, just to show we've got the front page, the posts page. We need a new page for about. How do you think we add an, a brand new about page? Add new. Yeah. So here under the pages, you can click either add new, or you can click down here add new. Or you've also got new at the top right there. Uh, page. So let's add a new page. In the title, we'll say about. We could write about us or about the company. That's all good, but I'm going to recommend, and this is a little foreshadowing, if you take some of my other classes, specifically the SEO class, the search engine optimization class. In that class, we go into more detail about what exactly to write on each page, concepts about keywords and optimization and all of that. And what I'm getting at that is if we write about us, don't write this yet, but if we write about us, the address that might appear would be something like victorsbakery.com slash about dash us. And that's okay, but better for your users and for the search engines is simply to have the site called about or the page called about because that's much more common that's that's almost becoming the standard that an about page is simply called about because then we won't know or the search engine or the user won't know is it about us is it about me is it about the company is it read about us which is even worse simply having about will help you in the long run you're following a, an emerging standard and it's going to help your search engine optimization so I'm going to say, let's leave this called about here. If you call this anything else, that's fine. You can do this. You can call it about us. And it might automatically, once you type something there and you click down here on the editor, did you notice that it filled itself in? Yellow right there? If you don't see it, click down here on this editor down at the bottom. What you should see is what's known as the slug. This is basically the address. Is and so, did you click here? Yeah. 
If you don't get it, that's okay. Just if you don't get it, that's okay. Just uh, follow along for the moment. It will appear. But the slug is uh, the the address of this file, which uh, you can click to edit. It, you don't usually need to edit it. It will just happen. Again, if it's not happening for you, that's okay. It will happen. But I'm just saying here that the address for an about us screen, I recommend that it's simply just called about. The title up here can be anything else, but the actual address that appears there, the slug, should be about. If we click here in the editing window, um, let's just write some very basic about us information. Again, if you're using my site, you know, we can make this up for my site, or you can make it up whatever you'd like. Uh, this is another thing that in the SEO class we go into detail about what we should write and um, how much content and all of that. But I'm just going to say some of the basics like uh, family owned bakery in Eastlake, California, specializing in organic. goods. Part of SEO is thinking about writing content that people um, can find, people would care about, people would, uh, would, would share. So that's why a blog is important for SEO. I teach a blogging class, where in that class we go into more detail about that. A, pre a little preview of that is this what I wrote here. I wrote a very dense sentence here. In this one sentence I tried to say as much as possible about this company trying to hit concepts and keywords of what people might care about in search. So obviously there's a big trend in organic food at the moment. You may or may not care about it. You may know people that care or not about it, but it's a big trend. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a, a trend that it's I don't think it's gonna, really going to go away. So I have this bakery that I'm trying to get found. I want people to come to my website to buy my products because this is a class where we're going to sell products. But they're not going to find my site unless I write as detailed as I can what it's about so that the search engines can find me. So I wrote here family owned. That's to make a connection with people. I think depending on the clientele you're trying to reach my clientele that I'm trying to reach would care more about the, the, the little guy, the, the family owned, the, you know, the small business rather than the big chain, the corporation. So I'm writing language to try to appeal to this target audience. I've added a location, Eastlake, California. That way someone in Idaho might really want my cupcakes, but I don't ship to Idaho. So if someone is local and they're searching on Google or Yahoo or Bing or whatever, and they're searching and they type in these some of these keywords, more of a possibility that my site is found because I'm taking advantage of those keywords also. And again, organic. That would be a keyword probably that someone is searching for. So in a in a nutshell, SEO is about writing content that people would care about, that people are looking for, that people then want to share. And in the SEO class we go into more detail. But at this point, at least, I've written a little text. And we have a picture that we can also add to the, to the post. So after you write, or the page, after you write that, press enter. And there's no button that says, insert picture. There's the universal button, add media. Let's go ahead and click on add media. We get the insert media screen, we have an upload tab, or we have the media library. I only managed to upload two files last time, but we can use that heart one. So click it to select it. You see how that little check mark appears. If you don't want that picture actually, you can click the minus. 
So I want that picture. And last time when we inserted a picture, I skipped a bunch of things that I'll look at this time. On the right side, it shows us the picture, its original file name, when we uploaded it, dimensions and sizes and so forth. Let me give you some advice right here. Um, th these dimensions that, that are listed right here are pretty good to try to adhere to for your own pictures. 1280 by 861. It might not be those exact values depending on your picture. Maybe your picture is a square, so obviously 1280 by 861 won't work. Your, your picture will be distorted. But the point is, like on a maximum size of 1280 pixels is a recommendation that I give you for your pictures. Don't upload your picture straight from your digital camera. That's probably going to be 4,000 pixels, 3,000 pixels, 5,000 pixels. Perfect for print, terrible for the web. Because even if we show our picture as a small thumbnail, all of those pixels are still there, being shoved onto the site. And if you have seven beautiful pictures that are 4,000 pixels each, you've got a lot of pictures to download, and you're wasting people's um, time and download, and you're slowing your site down. So my advice is try to have the maximum dimensions, either horizontal or vertical, about 1280. Whatever the other dimension appears is fine, because usually you're going to be in proportion. But 1,280 pixels, maximum width or height, is a good goal. Depending on your picture, also this says it's 286 kilobytes, which is how much space, how much hard drive space does it take up? That's a, a little bit more than one quarter of one megabyte. And 1,000 megabytes is one gigabyte. And 1,000 gigabytes is one terabyte. So this is a small, relatively small picture. But as you keep adding more and more of these one quarter megabyte pictures, now you've got one megabyte. You add some more, now you've got two megabytes, five megabytes, ten megabytes. It adds up. So if you stay within these kinds of limitations, if you're at 1280, but your picture is 1,000 kilobytes, it's too big. You're going to need to use some software like Photoshop or iPhoto or whatever to kind of keep within these boundaries. So kilobyte size, file size, around 300. Higher than that, you're going to slow down your site, especially if you've got 10 pictures on one screen. You might think, well, I've got a fast computer at home. I'm paying for the most expensive Cox at home. Not everyone is. And also, more and more people are using a mobile device. And maybe they don't have good reception. So this is a whole issue on, in and of itself. You want to have nice pictures on your site, but you want to balance dimensions and file size with quality. Because I can put some settings in Photoshop to get that down to 50 kilobytes. It's going to download even faster, but it'll look terrible. It'll look pixelated and fuzzy. So the balancing act is between visual quality and file size or download speed. And that's another can of worms, but uh, kind of following these guidelines a bit is, uh, is useful. Does anyone have any experience with Photoshop? A couple people? More than I thought. Uh, anyone have experience in uh, iPhoto? few people. So whatever graphic software you have, you can look into uh, compressing your images. So going down further here, title, title is the text that appears when someone hovers their mouse over your picture. You've probably seen that. You're browsing a website, you put your mouse over a picture, a little yellow pop-up appears. That This is what appears there. Do you want to label that something other than, you know, so it's... Definitely. You want to use something better than this. That's pretty bad for SEO. Mm -hmm. um, it looks, you know, mechanical and, and, and fake. So uh, under the title here, you can label it as something more meaningful with capital letters and spaces and so forth. I would keep it to one sentence at the most, something meaningful. So this is a this is the about page. I'm putting in a picture, and then I could I could be literal and write 
heart cookie, which is okay, but really you have to think about what in terms of SEO and in terms of being found by the search engines and by people, you want to use all of these little spots to really maximize your message about what your site is. So I could be writing something more like, we only use the best organic ingredients. Again, I'm using the keyword organic. I'm then using a sentence for people. We only use the best organic ingredients. Yes? Um, does the SEO look into every single word in your uh, website? Yeah, the search engines, they're going to look at every single word and even like a title here and something else called alt text that I'll mention in a moment. And even the file name. The search engines are also looking at the file name. So I can't fix that here. I would fix that before I uploaded it. I would not keep this as, as that file name. And probably your picture right out of your digital camera is going to be img00278.jpg. Mm -hmm. Again, I would not keep those file names that come from your digital camera. I would also take, them, take the time to change your file names to be something more meaningful, such as organic cookie, uh, you know, organic heart cookie. Uh, that would be better. Yeah, when you're changing the title, that's not that's separate from the picture. File name, yeah, okay. it is. It's it's different. We cannot fix that in WordPress. We would have to, we would have to do it from our computer and then upload it with the right file name. Title is what appears when someone hovers their mouse over a picture. Alt text is what appears for users that need it. What I mean by that is that if you if you didn't know this, people that are completely blind can still use websites, can still browse the web, can still shop, can still do their banking. You think, how can they do that if they can't see the website? The web is such a visual medium. Uh, how can they manage something that is so visual? Well, people that might be blind would have a computer or software that reads the screen to them. So if I had that screen reader software, it would read to me, insert media, link, create gallery, link, set featured image, link, insert URL. And then those people would have a special keyboard where all of the links are organized on the keyboard and they know what to press because you can memorize a keyboard. And so a person that is completely blank can browse a website because the computer will read to them what's on screen. What the computer cannot read, though, is a picture. We don't have computers smart enough, really, to tell you what's in a picture. It may kind of be able to tell you there's people here. Maybe it can figure out this is a picture of the Eiffel Tower because, you know, we, there's millions of pictures of the Eiffel Tower. But there's no computer in the world that would know that this is your family reunion and Uncle Ted has a beer in his hand. So we would use the alt text to create text that the screen reader would read to the blind person. And you can simply use the same title that you wrote here that's fine or you can be literal again and make it say heart cookie organic heart cookie that's fine you have to decide the meaning of your pictures you can be literal or you can be what's the opposite of literal um, prosaic so if you don't know what to write for a picture, think about how would you describe the picture to someone over the phone that you know. They might not be blind, but they can't see the picture. So if you can describe it to someone in one sentence over the phone, you've done a good job of writing an alt text. Alt means alternative. It's an alternative to the picture. And for SEO, this is a requirement nowadays. It used to be a suggestion. Now it's a requirement that you have alt text because the search engines look at this and they see did this person take that extra effort to try to reach the most people you know people that are fully sighted and people that might have an impairment caption so out of all of these boxes really the only requirement is alt text title is optional you know, if you hover the mouse over it, it appears. 
great, might be interesting information or not, not required. Caption is text that appears below the picture. Visual text that appears below the picture, which again, may or may not want to, to add, but I'll, I'll paste the same thing in. It's optional. And description is purely for you. Purely for you as the WordPress administrator. The regular user won't see it. The point of using a description here is because uh, WordPress, uh, if, you, if you're used to other types of software where you created your own folder structure and you put all your cookie pictures in a cookie folder and you put all the cake pictures in a cake folder, there's no such thing as folders in WordPress. Every picture that you upload gets saved to the media library. So if you upload a hundred pictures, it doesn't give you the feature to make folders. But you've got the ability to search. So if you search, it's going to search the file name, it's going to search the description. That's how you can find your stuff if you've got a hundred of them. You can also organize by date of upload. But there's no folder organization built in like other software. That's why the description might be useful for you to find your stuff. Attachment display settings. Uh, okay, we've got alignment. Do you want the picture just anywhere, which is usually to the left? Do you want the picture in the center, the right, or the left? I'll put it in the center. Link to media file or other options. Let me get back to that in one moment. Size. The original size was 1280 by 861 and I can display it on screen as a thumbnail, medium size, large size, or the full original size. So whichever one you like here you can select. I'll keep it on medium. And again this is cool because in the old days if you had a big picture you would then use Photoshop to create a medium sized one, a thumbnail sized one, and upload three pictures, the medium, the small, and the large. Here you upload one picture and then WordPress basically then shows the appropriate sized picture as necessary that you select here. So if we have it on medium and we leave this link to media file, if someone clicks on that picture it'll then show the original media file as the big size. So again, I don't need to upload different sizes, I just uh, upload one size and tell it, let people click on it, and it'll link to the original media file. Question? Um, what is the impact of having the caption and description for SEO? Um, the description, I don't believe, a, has any impact because it's just internal to WordPress. The caption could be helpful because, again, this is content that is going to be displayed on the site, and therefore it's content that the search engines can find and categorize and then serve you when someone searches that. So it is useful to add captions and I believe it's a recommended option in the search engines put a caption not required maybe one day they'll make it recommended and if you start now you'll you'll be done with that. So it can help you it's optional but I kind of recommend it. Well, all text is the most important. Yes. So, and then title and then probably caption. I would put alt text first, caption second, and then title third. Okay, thank you. So we can have a link to the original media file, we can attach it to the send it to the attachment page, which is almost the same thing, except that if you select media file and someone clicks the picture, it'll show the large size picture, but just on a plain white background. If instead you select attachment page, it'll show the larger picture within the context of your theme so that it actually looks like part of your site instead of just a white background. You can say no link or we can say custom link, custom URL. So then this could be a link over to whatever, Amazon.com can be a link over to amazingcakes.com 
we can put in a link to whatever we want here. Uh, so when someone clicks the link, it clicks the picture, it follows the link. You can put whatever you want here. I'm going to keep it on uh, media file. Notice that's going to be a link anyway to the original JPEG file. So we have the button to easily insert a picture. We've got these details that we should care about, especially for SEO. And again, alt text is the most important. Once you insert it, is there a way to go back and edit that? Yeah, I'll show you in just a moment. Go ahead and select Insert into Page. There's our picture. We've got the text, we've got the picture. If we want to go back to edit it, maybe change, maybe I misspelled that down there, change its alignment. If you click once on the picture, you get the quick editing tools here, align left, align right, center. You've also got remove the picture. This doesn't delete the picture, it just removes it from this page. And we've got edit. Let's click on edit. Because actually, the funny thing is, if we go back to edit it, you get other options. It's kind of weird. I don't know why they don't give you all the options when you insert. You only get these options after you go back to edit. Click on edit. There's caption, there's alt text, here's alignments, here's size and link. And then we've got advanced options. Most of you won't need to use most of these extra things, except open link in a new window or tab. If you have this picture linked over to some other website, it's a good idea to turn that on. Have you ever gone to a website, you click on a link, it takes you to some other site, you close the window of that website, and you lost the original site? That's because they did not activate that. Here, if you activate open, open the link in a new window, a person clicks on your picture, it goes over to your Facebook, they're on Facebook, they're done with Facebook, they close Facebook, your site's tab is still open. And that's better because then they don't lose your site. You're going to click on the picture, then you click the little edit pencil, once you click on that, then at the bottom you've got advanced options. On this example, I'm not going to put that on. It would not make sense. I, I have a link to my picture. It's opening the original picture. If you want to, you can open it in a new tab not necessary, but usually you're going to have links open in a new tab when they go to an external site. If I'm on victor.com and I link over to john.net, that's an external site, I would open a new link in a new tab. But if I'm going from my file on myvictor.com to another file still on myvictor.com, I would not open it in a new window. That's going to open too many windows and confuse the user. Why do I have so many tabs at the top? So you should, you should really only do that for going to external sites. Let's see, let's edit original. You can play with that on your own. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, you can do a little cropping and so forth, but I'm not going to worry about it. You can experiment with that on your own. I'm just going to close this window. If you made a change, you can click Update, or you can close the little X. Click the little X. So now I've got here this About Us page. Quick question. Do we want comments? Do we want people to leave a comment on our About page? Probably not. That's what the blog is for. So I'm going to tell it, turn off allow comments. I don't want people to leave a comment here. You could if you want. There's nothing wrong about it. There's no, no, no detriment to, to SEO. But I don't want to deal with people writing a weird comment on the About page. That's what the blog is for, in my case.
So in the top right corner, let's go back up and click Publish, the little blue button. <coughs> so now we've got an About Us page. Great. Let's go visit site and let's check it out. Once you've updated, once you've published, go to visit site. And what do you see? Not the about page. It did not add itself automatically to my menu. Well, that might be annoying. Not really, because if you get more advanced with SEO and marketing and social media and such, there's the concept of landing pages. Landing pages are specific pages that you cannot get to through a menu. You get to them through a tweet, for example. Whenever you get an email from uh, a company marketing you something or you see a tweet from a company and you follow that link, oftentimes those are called landing pages because they're not pages that are within the main <coughs> navigation structure. You can only get to them following a tweet. The point of that is that companies use that to test. People really like this tweet, or no one responded to that tweet. People really want this coupon, because they can track how many hits that page got. They can track how many hits or clicks that tweet got. They can track how many times people actually read the newsletter and clicked the link, because they're going to pages, landing pages, that you're being funneled to. And we can do that simply by creating a page. And if those pages were all being added to the menu, that would be much more annoying when you get more advanced. So for us here, I want this About page to be in our menu. That means we need to edit our menu to include the page. It might not add itself automatically. Hover over the name of your site and then just do the shortcut jump to menus. So hover over the name of your site and select menus, which would be the same as going back to the dashboard, going to appearance, and then menus. And our current menu, the main menu, has a home link the blog link, but it doesn't have the About Us, does it? So right here, select the About Us, add it to the menu, and then it's in the menu. So once it's in the menu, you can reorganize this if you want. Maybe you want About Us to be f right after home. Be careful though when you rearrange things. Notice if you drag them over here, now that is indented. That's a drop-down item. I don't want that. I want it to be on the same level. Just like we have Victor's Bakery and I hover over it and it drops down, that's what, that's what you create if it's indented. You create a drop-down element. If you don't want that, just drag it to make sure it's as flush to the left as the other ones. And uh, since we made a change to this menu, let's click Save Menu, and then Visit Site. And there's the menu, Home, About Us, Blog. We're not limited to adding pages to the menu. We can also add links, like maybe for social media and such. Let's go back to the menus. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do it the way that is optimized for this particular theme. 
What I mean is that this theme down here says we have two sections, two locations where a menu could exist. One is uh, the primary menu, which we've been using, and one is something called the social links menu. So what I'm going to do here is we've got a main menu which is going to display home, about us, our blog, products, my account, that sort of thing. And then I want another menu <coughs> that displays the, the Twitter and the Facebook and all of that. So at the top over here, let's select create a new menu. Where was menus? It's under appearance oh, and then okay, menus. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the top, let's select create a new menu. We give it a name. Let's just call it social. These names don't matter. They matter to you as you create new menus. Type social, press enter. I want to use the social menu and display it in the social links menu location. So activate social links menu. Right there, social links menu. And then I want to add the link to our Facebook, our Twitter, whatever we might have. And those are going to be custom links. Notice we have all our possible pages to add to the menu. When we, when we blog some more and work with categories, we can add categories. We have custom links, which are links that we would type ourselves to any other website. So let's go to custom links on an address here. You can make this up or put a real address or use what I'm going to use. I'm going to type facebook.com slash PMD interactive. And the text of that link will be Facebook. Facebook.com slash PMD interactive. And the text is Facebook and then add to menu. Twitter.com slash PMD interactive. And that is our Twitter link. I, th I believe actually this, this uh, theme will automatically show the logo. So for the moment I'll just add Facebook and Twitter, maybe a couple of others in a moment. I want to save this menu and then visit site. Save the menu if you've made any changes, and then we'll visit site. Look at that. So if I click on one of those links, it should go over to the social media, but then the problem should be that what happens is um, it did not open in a new tab. It's staying in the same tab. So if a person closes that Twitter profile, it closed everything. So I need to go back to edit the menu. Now I've got two menus to work with up on top here. Select a menu. We've got the social menu, we've got the main menu. We've got two separate menus. They can exist independently. I'm going to edit the social menu. You can click the little triangle to open that. And here's the weird thing. Uh, for such a common thing, the option is not on by default. The option is, remember when we showed for the, for the, the link of the picture, there was the option to open in a new tab. Or window. Um, we can do that here as well, but that option is not even on by default. 
to turn it on, we have to go to the top right corner and go to Screen Options. And then turn on here under the section Show Advanced Menu Properties, turn on Link Target. Question? All right, just one moment. So you're going to turn on Link Target. And now you're going to see open link in a new window or tab. Now if I save that and visit site, that one opens in a new tab. So let's uh, <clears throat> take our, uh, our second break. Um, I'll catch you up if you need to, and then we'll go on and uh, keep working on our site.